I think this is Brewdog's version, and I think that is your version. If that is your version, I'll be so happy because it's like when you. It smells incredible. Now, regular viewers will know I like nothing more than a nice schema adventure, something interesting to do to fill the time before I die. And that's why today we're going to brew some beer. So to start my beer making adventure, I bought a beer making kit uh, from a company called Brooklyn Brew Shop. Um, I'll put a link to what I got down below, but they have a variety of different um, types of ales and things. I've gone for a Brewdog Elvis Juice Grapefruit Infused IPA that we're gonna make here. So when you buy it, it comes with pretty much everything you need. So you've got some hops and different varieties and some yeast in there. We've got some sanitizer because it's important to keep things clean and various clips and bungs and stuff like that in there. Got, I think what it's called a racking cane, like a plasticky tube there. I think this might be a thermometer. It is a thermometer, that's in there. Loads of malt and grains there, little kit for us to make our beer with. Some plastic tubing and this that we're going to use to ferment. So I've done a little bit of research into brewing beer on the internet. It seems that about 95% of brewing beer is cleaning and sanitizing things. So we're going to do that at the beginning. We've got a little sanitizer packet that comes with it. Uh, and we just, I've got five litres of water, which is roughly a gallon. It's an American kit, so a lot of the things are in American language. So I'm having to sort of work it out. So I'm gonna put half of that in this sink of water. That half. And I'm gonna mix that up, and I'm just gonna sanitize everything that I'm gonna need for this brew. Basically everything that comes in contact with the beer has to be sanitised because it's yeast and heat and all that sort of stuff. It's a prime breeding ground for bacteria, you can't let anything go in there. So I've sanitised everything, I've put it on the side there, I've got 2.4 litres of water here which I've got to get up to 71 degrees Celsius. So we we'll pop that in there and get it going. Now it comes, the kit comes with a nice thermometer uh, there. But what I've actually got is I've got, because I do barbecuing outside, I've got my own prong thermometer thing that I can just that I use to put in meat or something like that to see the temperature inside. So I just put that in the water and get an accurate reading as we're going along of, of, of how hot things are. So there we go, that's at 71 degrees there. So I'm just gonna keep that nicely at that temperature. I turn the heat off because the pan's quite thick and it holds heat quite well. So hopefully I won't need to keep it on constant heat and then Take my sanitised scissors and I'm going to pour the malt into the water. So this bit's called mashing in, but what I'm going to call it is making beer porridge, because that's basically what you're doing, you're getting grains on hot water. And so once you're, once you've got your grains in there, just stir it all around so they're all nice and wet in there. It's settled down dead on 66 degrees Celsius and that's what it said would happen in the instructions. It said it'd be 71 degrees when you put the grains in it brings it down to 66 so it's, it's pretty precise. I've got to say one of the things that brewing appeals to me is the maths and numbers involved. I quite like that. I like the sort of mix of sort of I guess artistic creating things with different hops and stuff like that and I like the maths essentially. Uh, we're now going to just check this every 10 minutes, um, take temperature readings from various places of it and make sure it stays in that temperature for an hour and this is going to get all the sugars uh, to come out of the grain because it's the sugar, the reaction with the yeast that makes beer. Okay that's been an hour now and the next stage is called mashing out which is basically where you heat that up to 77 degrees whilst turning it constantly. Let's go. Okay, so we've mashed out, which means it's gone up to 77 degrees. It's actually got a little bit above that, so I'm gonna try and sort that out now. What I've got here is I've got, this is gonna be called, I think, a mortar tun. 
Uh, this is what I think is basically I'm making. We've made our beer porridge, now we're going to make our beer coffee because it's a bit like a cafetiere sort of thing where you squeeze things. So I've got a sieve over a stock pot, and I've got some um, a bit of sort of netting y thing as well to keep it in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour this over the sieve and into the bag. I'm going to try not to spill it because I imagine that that would hurt. Oh, yes! Okay, so this is why I did the bag, because the sieve isn't big enough, so I'm gonna, gonna lose the sieve, and then I can just pour it straight in here. In you go, my porridgey friend. So a lot of things in beer brewing seem to have awesome names, like mashing out and stuff like that, but this has got the best name. It's called the Sparge. I think this is more of getting the sugars out of things. And what we're going to do now, we've got some water heated up to 77 degrees Celsius. And we're going to pour this slowly and evenly over the grains. So I'm going to use my sieve that I've once again sanitised. Put that over the top and hopefully that will help it go over evenly. I'm not sure it is. Hang on. I'm going to pour this over the back of a spoon. No, it's just going to burn my hand if I do that. Let me try that way. So the liquid that comes out the end of this is called the wort, I believe. Spelt W-O-R-T, but I think it's wort. It's pronounced. There's going to be brewers here who are going mental at me getting everything wrong here. Um, but that's the thing that's going to become beer once we add the yeast to it. Wort. But... Uh, so what we're going to do now, we have to pass it back through the grains again. I think you probably can do this multiple times if you want, but I'm not. Um, so I'm going to lift this bag of grains out, let it drain for a second, I'm going to put it in the other pot and then pour the water back through. Okay, so I've got my wort now, and I'm gonna heat it up, and this part's called the boil, which is where you basically boil it for an hour. So this is the fun bit here, because this is where you actually get to um, add the hops and stuff like that. There's three different hops that go in here. Amarillo hops, one of your Peter K fans. Uh, Citra hops, and Simcoe hops. Uh, so these go in during the boil, and the first ones we put in, I believe, are five pellets of citra at the start of the boil. I don't know whether it means when to reach the boil or straight away, so I'm just going to do it straight away and put five pellets in. You can use fresh hops or you can use pellets, but for this we're going to use pellets and chuck them in now. Oh, they're in a pack within a pack! Like one of those Russian dolls. That's what the pellets look like. They're tiny. You can get you can use proper hops or you can use pellets, but let's put five of these in. I believe the hops that you use early on uh, give it bitterness, and then later on you'll add further hops, and those give it like the sort of hoppy flavour that you may or may not want, depending on what beer you're making. But that smells great. Okay, so we're half an hour into the boil, and so we need to add more hops. So we're going to add one third the Amarillo hops and the Simcoe hops have stupidly cut into the cut the label off the Simcoe ones. I'll keep them together. They smell great by the way, really citrusy. So almost everything is included in uh, the beer kit. All you need is water, obviously, and pans and sieves and stuff like that. But you also, ingredients wise, uh, for this you need a grapefruit, you need some honey, and you need um, water as well. So at this stage it's five minutes to go with the boil, so I'm just going to get the grapefruit, give it a little squeeze over, chuck it in. I should say I'm not sure whether I was supposed to put the entire grapefruit in or whether I was just supposed to put the juice of the grapefruit in. It's not very clear in the instructions. Alexa, stop the timer. So there we go, that's the end of the... Stop. 
That's the end of the uh, boil, so I've just turned the heat off there now. And at the end there, I just put the other bits of hops that I need to add in there. So I'll just chuck them in into that now and give it a little stir. So the next stage is the fermenting, where we add the yeast and that should supposedly turn it into alcohol uh, and make beer, really. So before we can do that, though, we need to get the temperature down. It will just kill the yeast. So you have to get it down to something like I don't know, what temperature is it? Below 21? Yeah, to below 21 degrees. So what we need to do is get that as quickly as possible. So I've got a watery, icy bath thing in the sink. I'm gonna just carry this, this beast over. And do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoop out the grapefruit because I'm not entirely certain if that's supposed to be in or not. Then I'm just gonna fill up the sink so it can cool down with the cold water. Okay, so the good news is the wort has come down to um, below 21 degrees, which is where we wanted it. So now we're gonna put it in to let it ferment. So this is where it's really important to make sure everything is sanitized because when things are boiling, that's killing the bacteria anyway. But here, we're, we're at lower temperatures now, so we're not gonna get a chance to kill the bacteria. So anything that's gonna to touch the beer has to be sanitized. So all this is sanitized. And I've got a little funnel, a little sieve here, and all I'm gonna do is start to pour this stuff in. You can take out that, don't need that anymore. Um, we can pour this in to the beer. I'm gonna do that like this rather than just tipping it because I don't think it's gonna work. You know. A little sieve here to get any bits of sediment out. This is the kind of thing that might be quite useful to have a second person because then you get a lot quicker, I think. How are you doing it? I've really enjoyed brewing beer so far. I mean, I know we're uh, not fermented yet, but it does seem quite a fun, it's a cloudy bit, it does seem quite a fun thing to do. Okay, so there we are. We've got one gallon of beer. I uh, don't know how much that is in litres, but we've got one of them. Uh, and the next stage, we need to add the yeast, which is what will make it ferment and make beer. So with my wort now, I'm gonna um, pop the yeast in. So what I've done is I've sanitized both the packet from the outside and the scissors so that there's nothing bad going on there. And we're just gonna pour the yeast. You call this pitching the yeast. I don't think this is different um, sections. First of all, we made beer porridge. Then we made beer coffee with sort of cafetiere type motion. Then we made like a beer soup where you cook it for an hour and other things. I don't know what this is, putting yeast in I guess. So we just pour that in. Show the whole packet's in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sanitize my hands quickly because as we know, anything that touches the beer has to be sanitized. I'm gonna lift this up and we're gonna give it a big old shake and try not to drop it. And this is to sort of aerate, get the yeast going, start it off and get it aerated and all that sort of stuff and start working its yeasty magic. And hopefully, I'm not gonna spill any. So next we need these bits. We've got this little screw topper thing that's got a uh, little hole in it. And we're gonna screw that on at the top. It's been sanitized, of course. This tubing's been sanitized. And we're gonna put this in, push it in not more than an inch in. So just a little bit in there. And then this end is going to go into some sanitizer. Put that in there. And that just sits in there. And it's going to be like that under the stairs in this case, but somewhere dark and where it's not going to be disturbed for a few days like this. And then we're going to add bits to it. I'm going to go and put that over there now. But the next stage is going to be when we do more stuff under the stairs. Look at this, it's the next morning, so it's been in there for just over 12 hours. Look at it bubbling away. So I was worried it might not ferment, but definitely is a bit of foam on top. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so it's day three now. Things have settled down a bit in there. Still the old bubble just coming through, just saw one there. 
Uh, but now, because it's sort of calmed down, what we've got to do is replace this tube with this air thing, air lock. So I'm just going to sanitise these bits again because let's sanitise everything that the beer is going to touch. Now we need to fill up the sanitizer to the line, so it's a bit high, to the line with sanitising solutions. So that seems alright there. That goes in the top there. We leave it to do its bubbly business. Okay, so it's a week after we, bought, we put it in the fermenter. It's all looking quite beery. Got the rest of the hops, and I'm just gonna we're gonna dry hop it now. So I'm just gonna take this thing off. I'm just gonna put the new hops into the pot. Smell amazing, the hops. Not the beer. I can't smell the beer. Let me put this back on. Seal it up. Leave it for another week. Now it's time to bottle the beer, but because of technical issues I didn't manage to record any sound. So here's the process. Get the fermented beer and raise it up a bit. Connect the racking cane to the tube, fill with sanitizer and clip the end. Then place it in the pot you're going to decant the beer into, to which you've already added honey and water which will kick off the carbonation in the bottle. Unclip the clip so that the beer starts flowing through your siphon and into the sink, then siphon the beer into the pot. This means you aren't ending up with sediment in your finished beer. Raise the pot up high and repeat the process to get the beer from your pot to your bottles. Once that's done, you can use a bottle cap to seal the beers and leave them in a cupboard for two weeks to condition before the grand tasting. So here we are, the day of judgment. It's now been four weeks since I started brewing the beer. They were bottled a couple of weeks ago and they've been conditioning in the bottle. And this is the final result, the Binday IPA. Great label. Thank you. Um, so the idea is that this should taste like Brewdog Elvis juice, because it's my own version of that. And by my own version, I mean just followed the kit recipe. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a blind tasting. I brought along uh, my glamorous assistant, Mr. Lloyd Griffith, who's going to be the first person to taste the Bin Day, Day IPA and we'll see if we want to die. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these up, Lloyd. If you cover your eyes so you don't know which one's going in which glass. That's what I'm doing. I don't, I don't want to see the colour as nope. it comes out. Very sensible. So first of all, I'm going to pour out this one. And now I'll pour a bit of this one. I'll be honest, they look very different at this point. Well, I won't look. I won't look. But no, you, you, I'm sure you can. I think, I think that'd be fine. Let me just, I'll just shuffle it off a bit. I think something's happening, the, the fact that this is just foaming at the mouth. Look at this. Look. It's just like a volcano. Yeah, that's good though. I All don't right. know if it is good or not. Let's find out. I think that might be overly carbonated. Have, you, have you drank any of this yet? No. So I'm the first person to do it. You are the first person to do it. Blind. So oh God. I've got, I'm going to shuffle the glasses, Lloyd. I know which one's which. Um, you can uh, you can open your eyes and pick one. It's, it's up to you. I'm not going to tell you which well, one's I, which. I don't want to look at them if that's all right. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So taste test. Lloyd's going to drink the first beer. <laughs> first off, smells like a beer. Okay. Look, nice. Nice? Nice, yeah. Okay, I'll give you the other one now for you to try. Smell like a beer? First off, smells less like a beer. Right. Tastes like something like a beer. <clears throat> I can smell a lot <laughs> of- This is still frothing. <laughs> Volcano beer. First of all, Lloyd, which yeah. one's your favourite? The first one that you tried or the second one you tried? I'd say that the first one was more fragrant. Okay. So this one was more fragrant. Yeah. This one, it still tastes like a beer, but I'd say it's more of a European number. 
do they, they they taste noticeably different then you say yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah so i'm just gonna have another little um which ones which one do you think is my version and which one do you think is brew dog's version i think this is brew dog's version and i think that is your version if that is your version i'll be so happy because it's like when you it smells incredible it smells incredible lloyd that's this one no way that is a big Shut day up. IPA. <laughs> it's amazing it's much better than that i didn't want yes. to dis disrespect it are you being serious yeah look you see the same color oh my god yeah. what's that that's that's the brew dog elvis juice i'm gonna taste this to check it's not gone off or anything like this is the brew dog one this is my one i prefer the brew dog one do you <laughs> They don't taste the same at all. This no. this one doesn't really taste of grapefruit. It was meant to taste of grapefruit, I think. Really? I mean, it's definitely beer, though. I I I I prefer your one. It smells better. The thing I opened when I first so when I first because that was the first one I drank, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When I held it to my nose, the first off you go, oh, that smells that smells proper great, beer. like a proper beer. And you do like you get the the different flavors in there, and then it, when you taste it, you're like, oh yeah, that tastes like a a craft ale that you'd buy, an IPA that you'd buy from a, you know, a shop. This one, I, when I first smelled it, I was like, that smells not like a beer. I thought it was the other round. I think yours is better. You've got to go into business. Amazing. This is it. Bindi yeah. IPA. Right. Well, I've been encouraged by that. And even though it's not quite the same, it's getting positive reviews. So I think what I'll do is continue to work on my Bindi IPA and maybe expand my brewing, uh, plan get more equipment and brew some more beer in the future i'll go to that lawyer can i buy some bottles now i can give you one to take home there's only about seven bottles no. you, greedy. Okay. yeah nice thanks for watching i know it's been a um long video but just think of the uh mid-roll adverts um uh, and and we'll be doing probably more beer related stuff in the future because i think i might well get into this because i'll be quite like nice mix of maths sanitizing and alcohol Thanks for watching. Click subscribe and all that. Lloyd's got a YouTube channel too. Go look at that. Yeah. Nice.